It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Uh, this next question, Brian, is from Tim. Uh, this is a different Tim. This is Tim M. Uh, what are your thoughts about Roth conversions when you're in a high tax bracket and in a high tax state? Is it worth it? I'm 47 and retiring in two years. So uh, let me, I want to paint the picture. He's 47 and he's currently in a high tax bracket and he lives in a high tax state. But he's going to retire in two years, right? So some things are going to change. What's generally like when he's asking about Roth conversions, why don't we tell him like, hey, what do we normally think about when people retire? Why do we do Roth conversion? What's the strategy that we implement? And what are some of the trip wires we want to make sure that we like we look at and we stay aware of? Well, I think it, Tim, what he's alluding to is that you've got a you're in a high tax situation right now, high earned income. You live in a high tax state, but yet you have huge changes coming in two years with retirement. It's not uncommon, and look, go look at a map of, just go do a search on the migration of Americans right now, and you'll see that um, in, in the, the top three is Illinois, Chicago, I mean, Illinois, California, and New York have just tons of people flooding out of them and going into lower tax states. Um, those migration patterns are legit, and I think a lot of them are retirees, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's because, it, so Tim, if you're, if you're geographic location is going to change in a few years. Um, you don't want to do those Roth conversions until maybe you are in um, one of those states, mm -hmm. because maybe what happens is, yeah, maybe your federal tax rate, because it sounds like you don't think your income's going to go down even in retirement. Is, is, is well, that alluded well, I don't know. to? This is all they said. I said, uh, uh, what is, uh, when you're in a high tax bracket, I was kind of reading it. I'm in a high tax bracket now at 47, but I imagine at 49 when he's retired, his income going to drop. Well, yeah. Right. So that now, that, 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 that takes it. You maybe you can stay in place even if you're in a high tax state. If your earned income goes way down, mm -hmm. it goes to zero potentially, where you're just living off of whatever comes through passively. Um, then yeah, you know, wait wait the two years. If you live in, because we do see retirees also that their income doesn't go down mm -hmm. because maybe they've done such a good job of creating passive income in the background, but that geographic change occurs, you'll at least save the 13% mm -hmm. or the, the 6 to 13%, depending upon which state you live in, um, of, of, of costs that you have from living in the state that you live in, now, the income taxes. In order to like perpetrate a Roth conversion strategy well, you have to have a little bit of a crystal ball. Now, again, I was kind of like... I was sort of just like glancing at the comments, and I think it was vinyl. Somebody said, "Yeah, if you got ten million bucks, your RMD at you know at this would be like four hundred thousand dollars." One of the reasons we like doing uh, Roth conversion strategies is because we know that at seventy two we lose control of our tax situation. What you have to figure out, Tim, in your situation is when you lose control of that. What is your taxable income likely going to look like then, and what do you think tax policy will be at that time? If you believe that in the present years, you can convert dollars at a lower tax rate than it will be at that year, or it makes sense from a legacy standpoint for you to possibly pass on Roth assets to your heirs and that sort of thing, then Roth conversions may very well make sense. But this is, again, is a great example. These things are nuanced and there are tripwires. When you start converting, you might cause, you're too young now, but eventually you might cause Social Security to become taxable. You'll start running into Medicare surcharges later on. Uh, you might have health care subsidies that you're eligible for that you then become ineligible for. You just want to make sure you understand all of the wanted consequences and unwanted consequences when you begin carrying out these strategies. So this is a great time that if you think this is something that might make sense for and you're preparing for a very early retirement at 49, it might make sense to try to take the relationship to the next level. It might make sense to reach out to a professional advisor and I happen to know a group of some of the best ones in the entire world. Go to aboundwealth.com, check out our work with us page, go to moneyguy.com, check out our work with us page. Because when you do these types of things, you want to make sure that you measure two, three, four, five times and only have to cut once.